So hi there again everyone, this is again Alan and welcome back to my watercolor channel. Today in this video, I am going to be reviewing one of the world's most loved watercolor brands and that is none other than the Schminka Horadam Aquarel from Germany. Today I have selected to react on their two watercolors and I have 54 colors with me. I am super excited so let's go. I got these tubes from many different sources. Some are from my friends who travel in Europe, some are from Jackson's, some are from stores here. The price per tube for 15 ml ranges from 550 to 1000 Philippine pesos or 11 US dollars to 20 US dollars. And for 5 ml tubes, it's around 250 Philippine pesos to 400 Philippine pesos or 5 to 8 US dollars. And I think that's the lowest price I've seen. These are of course a lot of paints and I know I cannot finish this in my lifetime and I also collect paints for all sorts of reasons. For this particular set, I am uh, reviewing them and after that, I'm going to be putting them in half pans and uh, sell them in my Shopee store. So to my folks from the Philippines, please do check out my art store which I'm linking here. I started collecting the tube paints of Schminka in 2019 but I'm not new to Schminka because I got my first set in 2017 and this is a half pan set and also I got the student grade which is the academy. Schminka is a German company that makes art supplies from watercolors to gouache to oil paints and more. One thing I really appreciate in this brand is their dedication to excellent documentation of their products. Their catalog is my favorite among all. So here is their uh, catalog. It is so complete. So everything that you need, they provide it here from uh, pigment names, pigment codes, light fastness rating, transparency rating, the name of the pigment, the description of the colors, everything that you need is here, even their brochure. This one is also complete. So if you want to collect these paints, I suggest that you get their catalog or you may also download it in their website. Now let's check out an individual tube. So their tubes are made out of aluminum with a plastic cap. In front, you'll find here Horadam Aquarel, the number code, the series number, I think, the stars for the light fastness rating. We have also the transparency and the granulation levels. Um, we have the color name here in five different languages. We have here the brand logo and it says here 15 ml. At the back, we have here the information of uh, the company. And it also has here ASTM D-4236 and on this side we have the pigment code. Aside from the 15ml, I also have their 5ml tube and let's compare our Schmincke tubes against the other brands. So I have here a 5ml from Core. We have here a 7ml from Isaro, a 10ml from Van Gogh. A 14 ml from Windsor and Newton, a 15 ml from Mgram, and an 18 ml from Old Holland. And now for our swatches and sample painting, I am using as always Arches 185 cold press cotton paper. I have here 54 colors. I actually have more but I can only fit 54 so I chose 54 from my 60 or 70 colors. For my brushes, I'm using the Da Vinci Maestro Tobolsky Kolinsky uh, 6. That is my flat brush and for my round brush, I have my uh, Nevskaya Palitra Kolinsky Sable size 3. I have no big issues about the two paints when it comes to pouring them in half pans or dotting them down. They dry very decently but please do take note that some of the pigments, especially the granulating and the cobalts, they tend to be gooey, very gooey and they may even expand in tubes. So get ready with your half pans whenever you're um, opening your tubes for the first time. So let's dot down. and speed up for the rest of the colors. And now we are ready to swatch. 
So our first color here is a cool yellow. It's lemon yellow using PY3 and as you can see it's so vibrant and it's beautiful. Next is cadmium yellow light using PY35 and I find it a bit more vibrant as compared to the lemon yellow PY3. Next is pure yellow using PY154. Now I think this is a mid yellow and it's also very saturated. Next is my favorite yellow pigment of all time, PY150 and it's transparent yellow. In mass tone, it appears to be an earthy yellow but in light washes, it becomes mid to cool yellow. That's why I love it. Next is Turner's Yellow using PY126. I think this is some kind of uh, a rare pigment because I don't usually see it in other brands. But yeah, this is an opaque pigment and it's very useful I think in skin tones. Next is Chromium Yellow Hue Deep using PY65. Now this is a warm yellow and it's also very vibrant and it seems to be transparent. Now we have Kinacridone Gold Hue using PY150 and PR101 and this is a very nice color combination to achieve a Kinacridone Gold color. In other brands, they usually combine PY150 with PO48 to achieve Kinacridone Gold but Schmincke uses PR101 and I think it's working on this combination. Next color is a combination of PW6, PY53, PBR24. And that's Naples Yellow. This is another convenience color in uh, making skin colors. Next is another convenience color. This is Naples Yellow Reddish using PW6, PW4, PR242, and PY42. This is another option also for achieving skin tones. Next is Chromium Orange Hue using PO62. I think this can be a mid-orange but yeah, it leans a bit more to yellow, yeah. Now we have Saturn Red PO64. It's called a red color but it appears to be an orange, a reddish orange color and it's also semi-transparent. Now we have a genuine cadmium pigment here, PR108 for cadmium red light and this is a warm red. Next is Vermilion using PR255 which is I think a bit more opaque as compared to PR108 but it's also warmer. Next is Scarlet Red using PR254. This is an intense red. I think this is a mid red and this can be semi-transparent. Next is another cadmium pigment. This is cadmium red medium using again PR108. This is another mid red that is a bit more earthy as compared to scarlet red. It's like a blood red. Now we have PR179 Perilene Maroon. This is one of my staple colors in my palette and it's a very deep red. Next we have permanent carmine PV19 and this is now a cool red. It's very intense so far all the colors are looking so great and vibrant and just so intense and just smooth on paper now we have a quinacridone magenta using pr202 and this is a color between a cool red and violet and it's transparent now we have magenta using pv42 this is a very cool red that leans towards violet of course and uh, i prefer this over quinacridone magenta because it's more red but that's just me it's very vibrant now we have here potter's pink pr233 it's a lot more saturated and granulating as compared to other versions like daniel smith's or roman smalls Next is PV29 Perilene Violet. I think this is a standard version of the PV29 and it's transparent as well. Next is Quinacridone Violet PV19. This is uh, more purple as compared to Quinacridone Magenta and it's also transparent and very deep. Now we have Quinacridone Purple using PV55. This is obviously bluer as compared to Quinacridone Violet but it's also intense and deep also transparent now we have manganese violet i love this shade it's not 
very transparent but it's very saturated as well and it pops up when you mix it with other colors it's pv16 by the way and next color is pv23 schminka violet this is the carbazole and dioxazine equivalent in this brand and it's very saturated and this has very strong tinting strength now we have cobalt violet pv62 this is a nice violet but i think this is the least saturated so far but it's just almost the same shade as schminka violet now we have duft blue pv B60. This is like the Indian Throne or Indian Threen of this uh, brand. But I think this is less saturated and less deep. And next is one of my most favorite versions of Ultramarine. This is the French Ultramarine PB29. It's very strong. It's warm. When you compare it with the other colors here, it just pops up and it's also granulating but not as granulating as the other brands but that's fine next is ultramarine finest using pb29 again and as you can see this is not granulating this is gonna be very useful to artists who want warm blue but don't want a granulating blue this is not my favorite version because it's not as vibrant and as you know as punchy as the french ultramarine on its right but yeah it's surely gonna please other artists who prefer non-granulating warm blue now we have here cobalt blue deep using pb74 pb74 is a genuine cobalt pigment it's like a weaker version of the french ultramarine but it's more granulating and it can be i think a bit or a step warmer in mass stone next is another genuine cobalt pigment pb28 cobalt blue light and it's very comparable to ultramarine finest i think as compared to the other pb28s and other brands i think this is one of the warmest next is prussian blue using pb27 this version is deep and i'm not sure if i can use this version as a cool blue because it's just so deep now we have here helio cerulean using pb15 is to 3 or thalo cyanine blue green shade and this is the cool blue standard cool blue that i know so if i need a cool blue i'd stick with this pigment or with helio turquoise that which is the next color using pb16 and yeah if i had to choose i choose pb16 i just love this very tropical blue color and it's also very transparent and last in our blue section is cobalt turquoise using the green pigment pg50 this is also another genuine cobalt pigment and I think this is slightly cooler as compared to Daniel Smith's version. Next, we have here Perilyn Green using the black pigment PBK31. I think this is one of the strongest versions of this pigment. It's very dark and deep and I love it. Next is PG7 Taylor Green. I think this is just standard shade but not as heavy as compared to Daniel Smith's version now we have here pg18 and uh, as compared to daniel smith version i prefer this one because it's just easier to work with but it's also very light so if i think you need this cool green color just stick with pg7 unless you hate staining colors next is my favorite uh, green in this selection it's the pg26 cobalt green dark this is just so beautiful dark green very useful for forest paintings and yeah it's it's strong and it's semi transparent i think but it's really workable it's really nice next is sap green using py153 and pg7 i find it too vibrant and too cartoony i want it to be a bit more muted or earthy but that's just me next is may green using py151 and pg7 this is a vibrant yellow green color and i don't have anything much to say about it i'm not using this color but yeah i'm gonna challenge myself to use it one day <laughs> Next is Chromium Oxide Green using PG17. I think this looks standard. It's semi-opaque. Now we proceed to Earth Colors and the first color is Transparent Ochre using PY42. And uh, yes, this is transparent version of Yellow Ochre. If you don't want opaque earthy yellow, you can have this. Next is the standard Yellow Ochre again using PY42 and this is semi-opaque. Next, we have here Burnt Sienna. Oddly, it uses two pigments, PR101 and PBK9. It's semi-opaque, I think, but 
yeah, it's a beautiful version of Burnt Sienna. Next is English Venetian Red using PR101. It looks very close to Burnt Sienna. Next, we have here the beautiful Mahogany Brown using PBR33. We see here very strong granulation and dual tone. We have here warm undertone, warm orangey undertone. Next, we have another beautiful color which is Mars Brown using PBR6. It's not as granulating as Mahogany Brown but it's also granulating. And this is a warmer brown. It has an orange undertone. These two are my favorite browns here. Next is the Spinel Brown. Yeah, another favorite of mine. PY119 is also not common, I think. It's a uh, caramel brown and it's just unique in my opinion. Next is Indian Red using PR101 and PR206. This is purplish as compared to some brands that I've tried. Next is Burnt Umber using PBR7. I think this Burnt Umber is just clean. It's not granulating. It's a beautiful version also. Next is Van Dyke Brown using PY150, PBR7, and PBK7. This version is like Raw Umber of Daniel Smith. A deeper version of raw umber. It's uh, yellowish and grayish. Next is Paints Gray Bluish using PBK6, PB15 is to 6, and PB15 is to 2. This looks like the standard Paints Gray that we know, a bluish gray or a bluish black. Now, Schmincke's Paints Gray, our last color here, uses also three pigments PR101, PB29, and PBK7. Looks just like a uh, an ivory black it doesn't feel paints gray i don't see any hints of uh, blue but yeah i would have to stick with paints gray bluish so for the sample painting i have chosen six colors we have here cobalt blue light turner's yellow schmenko's paints gray burnt sienna scarlet red and sapwing so let's begin So now both our sample painting and swatches are finally dry, we can now have a closer look. Now let's discuss our Schmincke paints. 
they're all very vibrant in my opinion it's not as vibrant as asian paints such as holbein or mission gold and uh, even a little bit more subtle as compared to daniel smith and mgram but still these are very vibrant paints i can compare them with the white knight's intensity i think some of the colors of schminka are a tiny bit more lively now i think it's number one strength is its texture they're buttery and they're just so easy to spread they're very smooth yeah I, I felt nothing but joy when i used them now the dispersion is just in the middle not too bad not too good but it's moving faster as compared to the super granulation colors for mixability i believe they mix very well when it comes to light fastness, okay, let me set this clear because um, a lot of artists are confused when it comes to light fastness of paints. Some artists believe that when the brand is very popular or when the brand is expensive, all of the colors are light fast. No, it's not true. Okay, you have to first check on the pigments used because even Daniel Smith, for example, has a lizard crimson that uses, you know, the original pigment that is fugitive many artist grade paints still use fugitive pigments because they just can't you know they just can't avoid these colors because these colors are favorites but whenever these reputable brands use fugitive colors they make sure there are alternative colors that are more light fast so if you'd like to use Schmincke paints and you'd like to have all light fast colors you can rely on this list if you are particular to light fastness I suggest you to do two things first is to examine the pigment codes that are used in each color and check some websites such as handprint.com if these pigments are light fast and number two the more reliable option is to do your own light fastness test now when it comes to chalky test let me uh, rub a sheet of napkin or tissue paper against our swatch and sample painting and if we get some colors in our paper that means the paints are not adhering very well on the paper and that may be an indication that they're chalky. So our paper is clean. I don't think these paints are chalky. And now for our favorite part, which is the comparison portion, let's begin with our student grade paints, which are, I believe, automatically less performing as compared to our Schmincke Horadam watercolor paints. So let's begin with the Best Buy watercolors. We also have the Dong A Creative, the Symbolion watercolors, the Faber Castell solid watercolors, the Sterling Arts watercolors, the Reeves watercolors. Jony watercolor takes the Sakura Point Pocket Fill Sketchbox, the Maggie Waps Basics watercolors, the Montmartre Two Seasons, the Art Rangers, the Berkeley watercolors, the Pentel, the Prank 2007, the Prank 2019, the Marys watercolors in pans, the Marys in tubes, the Faber Castell tubes, the Pebeo Studio watercolors, the Le Frank and Bourgeois Duver watercolors, the Miyahini solid watercolors, the Windsor and Newton China version, the Grumbacher Academy, the Windsor and Newton Cutman, the Sonnet watercolors, the Van Gogh 12 plus 3 half fans, we also have the Pelican transparent watercolors, the Koinur and the Linke brilliant watercolors, the pretty excellent watercolors, Owen watercolors in metal case, yes I know these are a lot, the Owen watercolor cakes, the Koreta Kegan Saitambi, we also have the Simi Arts semi dry watercolors, the Simi Arts 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 watercolors, the Simi Arts solid watercolors 50s, we also have the Superior Fan Palette watercolors, the Superior Foldable Palette watercolors, and the Superior Watercolors. So we're done with the student grade paints. Now let's proceed to the artist grade paints that are not comparable with Schminka when it comes to performance in my opinion. But these paints are also good, please don't get me wrong. So let's begin with the Wichitron watercolors by Silpa Korn, the Mary's Masters watercolors, the Prima Marketing Tropicals, the Cucuyo Camelin watercolors, the Espanoleto Aquarela, the Lucas Aquarel 1862, the Mungyo Professional Watercolors, the Paul Rubens Floral Set from Troops, the Paul Rubens Watercolors in Pants, the Isaro Extra Fine Watercolors, the Utrecht Watercolors, and the Blocks Extra Fine Watercolors. Now let's proceed to our artist grade paints that are, I think, in my opinion, 
comparable to Schmincke Horadam Aquarelle, which is better. Um, that would really depend on an artist's personal preference, but I would just leave it as quote unquote comparable to Schmincke Horadam Aquarelle. So let's begin with core watercolors the Rembrandt Luxury Pack Box, the Mijello Pure Pigment Set, the Windsor Newton Professional, the Mijello Mission Gold Class, the White Knights from Tubes, the White Knights from Pans, the Holbein Artist Watercolors. The Daniel Smith paints. So we have the Alvaro Castane and the Daniel Smith Ultimate Mixing Set. And of course, just quickly, let's compare it with the Super Granulation Set. As you can see, the colors are not equal when it comes to intensity, vibrancy, and also, of course, with the granulation and texture. And of course, that is expected because these paints are specially made to achieve you know, texture, not really vibrancy. Now, if you're gonna ask me, would I recommend the Schmincke Horadam Aquarelle? My answer is a big yes. Schmincke paints are one of the most favorite paints by you know many watercolor artists in the world. It's a very reputable brand and all the categories are checked. Vibrancy of the colors, the texture, dispersion, the mixability, it's not chalky. You will never go wrong. Of course, these are a lot of colors. It's very overwhelming. I believe 12 to 18 colors from this color selection is all good for you to go. But of course, these paints are not the cheapest, especially if you're not from Europe. But for me, it's a good investment. You can start with even just 6 colors or 12 colors. You can buy pans, you can buy tubes, they're just the same formula. If you have not watched yet the Schmincke Horadam Watercolor Super Granulation Review, I'm gonna be linking it here. Please watch it too as well. And also, if you're from the Philippines and you'd like to try some of these colors, I'm gonna be putting them in half pans and make them available at my Shopee store. So please also do check it out. So I think that's all for today. Please don't forget to like and share this video to show support. And also, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more watercolor content. Again, thank you for watching and see you on the next video. Bye-bye.